very good evening to you. And on behalf of the CEO of Jaguar Land Rover, Dr. Ralph Spate, and the Board of Directors, it is my pleasure to welcome you here to Richmond Park and to the Royal Ballet School. The new fourth generation Range Rover was revealed to a star-studded audience in London's Richmond Park. This included Olympians and actors, journalists and models, and many more. Um, I'm always excited about cars. <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm a terrible petrol head, so, so uh, anything new to me is fa fabulous. I drive, I drive, I drive some, some boring cars and some, some exciting ones. This is probably the most significant Range Rover since 1971, in the sense that it's a real step change. So this is a kind of, you know, a, 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 an icon in the making, and we'll all look back on this and say, oh, I was there when they launched that one, and it was a really, you know, show-busy evening. It is definitely too early to call it a triumph, but it is certainly the most important milestone for Land Rover in several years car will be available to customers in the UK and USA by December. The rest of the world gets it in the first quarter of 2013. The new Range Rover has grown in size and possibly stature too. It attempts to offer new levels of luxury while also trying to stay green. The big significant difference between uh, the fourth and the third generation of the Range Rover is the fact that they've tried to very consciously make this vehicle a whole lot lighter. And so, uh, of course, it is an all aluminum monocoque. Uh, the first time that you're seeing something like that being done by this brand, you're also seeing the overall dimensions uh, increasing. There is a much longer wheelbase. It means that, of course, you're going to get more in terms of interior space. And yet, at the same time, they try to make it more streamlined, more aerodynamic, which means that uh, the overall roof height the uh, roof angle as well has been completely altered. In terms of uh, engines, they've tried to, again, downsize. You're getting a three-liter diesel. You're also getting an announcement from Range Rover that there will be a three-liter diesel hybrid as well. And I think that's uh, pretty significant for a brand like this, which you think would be very traditional, which would try and uh, perhaps stay a little bit more conservative, at the same time responding to global demand. And uh, if you look at an SUV segment, really, in terms of trying to achieve higher efficiency, uh, Going with a diesel hybrid is perhaps a little bit more intelligent. It is the world's first diesel hybrid SUV. And uh, the fact that it is all aluminum also is very, very significant. It means not just that uh, the materials are different or the uh, manufacturing process is different. It also means that they've actually sort of tried to reinvent the wheel in some senses. And so uh, that's going to be the interesting, crucial bit because, well, they say that it feels very different to drive as well. I can't wait. Remember, it's a diesel hybrid, which attempts to cash in on diesel's higher efficiency over petrol overall to begin with, and then enhancing that by throwing in a 50 kilowatt electric motor. Land Rover claims that the addition of the hybrid system, heavy battery notwithstanding, doesn't change the go anywhere credentials that are the hallmark of the Range Rover brand. The hybrid variant will be offered only in select markets though and that too later in 2013. And of course besides that the company is offering one supercharged petrol V8 and two turbo diesel options. One is the new V6 and then there is the diesel V8. So as I mentioned it is the very first time that a Range Rover will use an all aluminium frame. This reduces weight by 180 kgs. And this, despite the slight increase in dimensions, it is 27 millimeters longer than its predecessor and yet stays overall shorter than its rivals like the Audi Q7 or the Mercedes-Benz GL. The car's overall looks though are contemporary and yet unmistakably Range Rover. The clamshell bonnet on the uh, all-new Range Rover is, of course, very typical, very traditional. And in terms of the overall face of the car, it instantly tells you that this is a Land Rover. The classic grille up front, of course, the Range Rover badging up front here as well. But if you look at it, there are a few uh, very uh, specific contemporary elements that have been thrown in. Of course, 
heavy use of LED in the uh, headlamp cluster and uh, overall a whole lot more stylish. Remember that uh, the designers here had to keep a balance between being a typical Range Rover and also trying to appeal to some of the newer markets that this product's going to go into and so a little bit Evoque-like as well in front if you see. Uh, it's looking a lot younger, it's looking a lot more flamboyant and yet instantly it is definitely a Range Rover. Of course they've done a whole lot more in terms of customization as well because you get a whole lot of options on the autobiography uh, top end variant which means that uh, not just in terms of body color or interior trim you can do a whole lot more. There's a panoramic sunroof that's been thrown in as optional as well. And so it's going to excite different markets. It's going to excite different kind of customers. And at least that's what the management will be hoping when it comes to uh, just the way people respond to the way this car now looks. The vehicle is based here at Land Rover. In Land Rover Design, we have a design strategy, which um, was the design strategy that helped us create the award-winning Evoque. That design strategy is based on four elements fresh approach to functionality, sustainability, luxury, and of course, desirability. Great design is a gateway to customer desirability. It's about making that emotional connection. And this vehicle really does talk to those four key elements in every way. Now, one thing that's crucial to the DNA of this brand is to ensure that uh, the driver of this vehicle always maintains uh, what they call the command position. So uh, you get a commanding view of the road, and that's what customers would expect as well. First impression, it does seem to have that sort of a feel, but of course, it's too early for me to tell you if that's true. However, I will also tell you that uh, they've thrown in a few extra little goodies which uh, people are going to like, the start-stop button. There's also, of course, uh, start-stop in traffic too that's been thrown in on some of the variants and uh, soft-touch doors. The terrain response system, that's something I want to quickly mention as well. Uh, it has all its features that you would expect, but it also has an auto function now, which means that uh, the car will pretty much adapt uh, in a few hundredths of a second to the kind of terrain that you're driving on. So that's pretty impressive, and uh, some buyers might find that a little bit easier too. The company has spent one billion pounds on the entire project. This is because the new Range Rover's new architecture demanded technology enhancements for the manufacturing processes too. So the Solihull facility that makes this car has also been upgraded to meet the new production requirements at an expense of 370 million pounds. The company hopes to make good on the high investment by using some of these facilities and processes as also the new vehicle's new platform for future products. Most Range Rover variants will likely breach £100,000 here in the UK, but interestingly its entry variant starts at £72,000 and that is the same price as the entry variant on the outgoing third generation Range Rover. Well you can understand why there is so much excitement here, it's uh, not just any other car that's launching, it is a British Motors icon. and. Uh, the interesting part of the story here is that when you look at this brand new Range Rover, the fourth generation, what you're also looking at is the first car that's being developed uh, for JLR uh, completely after the uh, takeover from Tata Motors. And so uh, that is where I think a lot of people have been looking to this car to say that, look, is it uniquely British? Is it living up to all that's expected from this brand? And uh, that's what uh, the world's going to be watching out for in terms of anticipation, in terms of uh, just the kind of response that we are seeing here tonight. It seems that the uh, initial reactions, at least, are indeed very strong. Now, before we wrap this up, I have to show you the star attraction at the new Range Rover's coming out party. Yes, indeed, it was Mark Knopfler and his band who treated us to some evergreen hits like Money for Nothing. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for retina display, full screen view, faster response time, and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.